That's a cry of our hearts, Lord. Fill us to the overflow. We want your presence to overshadow your church, Holy Spirit of God. Fill us up completely, Spirit of the living God. Move in the lives of your children, move in the lives of your people, Lord God. These are days, Lord, when your name is being ridiculed. Lord, when your name is being ridiculed, but we know you are the living God. We know you are alive. We know your blood is at work in the lives of your people, oh God. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Fill us up, Holy Spirit. Fill us up, Holy Spirit. Destroy every activity of the enemy against your church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill us up. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for the amazing things that you are yet to do. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you adoration. Lord, I thank you for the privilege to bring your word. Lord, when I stood up to preach last week, I felt a resistance. But you brought your message through. I demolish every resistance from the camp of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your word come forth with power and authority, Lord Jesus. Let your signs and wonders follow the preaching of the gospel, Lord. Holy Spirit, rest upon me as I deliver your word. Thank you, Father. You are worthy. Bring healings, oh God. Break bondages, oh God. Set captives free, Holy Spirit. Bring hope to the destitute. Let there be answers released, even as your word comes forth and ignites the faith of your children. We give you praise. Can we put our hands together for the King? Amen. Let's thank the Holy Spirit for his presence with us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You may be seated, please. We are continuing our messages on um, the Holy Spirit. And this is the fourth message in the series. Uh, the first message was, who is the Holy Spirit? And then we want, went on to talk about the case uh, for the Holy Spirit. And then last week, uh, we talked about the Holy Spirit being the very presence of God. And, and today, we're going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. And this is going to be part one of the message. We'll continue uh, next week, Lord willing, the work of the Holy Spirit. Please stay with me to Acts chapter 1. Now, I want us to look at a few verses from there. Let's go to verse 4, Acts chapter 1. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Wait for the gift. And verse 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses all over the world. See, our Heavenly Father knows that it is impossible for us to live successfully and to do his work in our own strength, with our divine help. And so, he promised to send the Holy Spirit to empower us. The Holy Spirit is of paramount importance to the life of a Christian. Let me say it again. 
the Holy Spirit is of paramount importance to the life of a believer. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 18, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. I like the way the Message Bible puts it. The Message Bible says, don't drink too much wine. Hello? Any wine drinkers here? Don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God. Isn't that beautiful? Drink the Spirit of God. Huge draughts of him. Drink the Spirit of God. Huge draughts of him. In other words, be filled to the overflow. You see, alcohol only influences you when it enters your system. Similarly, your life will be influenced by the Holy Spirit only to the extent that you allow him to fill you. When you are filled with wine, it enters your bloodstream and then it influences uh, the way you, you behave. And similarly, uh, when you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, the Holy Spirit will influence your life. And so Ephesians 5, 18 says, do not get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so question, what happens when the Holy Spirit fills us up? What, what happens? What does he do in our lives? What, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? I want to talk about eight things um, that the Holy Spirit does when he fills us up. When we give him room to operate in our lives, there are certain things that happen. Now, I want to talk about eight of those things. First of all, he will transform your life. The Holy Spirit will transform your life. Secondly, he will empower you. Third, he will develop your character. Four, the Holy Spirit will guide you. Five, he will teach you. Six, he will bring life into your situation. No matter how dead the situation is, the Holy Spirit will bring life if you allow him to. And then seven, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, he will draw you away from sin. Sin will become more and more abhorrent to you as a child of God. And then finally, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are communing with him, he will intercede for you. He will pray for you. I want us to look at four of those uh, today and then next week we'll look at the last four in part two as we continue with the series. Now, the first thing he does is transformation. Transformation of the human heart starts with, with salvation, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. When a person is not a Christian, doesn't know God, the Holy Spirit draws a person to Christ when the person's heart is open. And then when the person comes into a saving relationship with Christ, the Spirit of God, who comes to dwell in him, will then change the person, will transform the person. We are saved through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And so, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13 says, As for us, from the New Living Translation, As for us, we can't help but thank God for you. Dear brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord. Loved by the Lord. We are always thankful that God chose you to, uh, to be among the first to experience salvation, a salvation that came through the Holy Spirit, a salvation that came through the Holy Spirit who makes you holy through your belief in the truth. And so salvation is enabled through the power of the Holy Spirit and then he also goes on to make us holy. We are saved to live holy lives unto Jesus. And so we are saved through the Holy Spirit and transformed into holy people by the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit also washes us and he cleanses us from all our past sins. And so when we come to Christ, we are completely forgiven. And then the Holy Spirit will wash away all the sins 
So we sound holy and righteous before God. Amen? And that's part of the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 9 to 11. It summarizes the, the very beautiful work of transformation which the Holy Spirit does when we come to Christ. The Bible says, Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Now, the, the, there's a lot of laxity that is going on right now in the Christian world. Anything goes and stuff like that. That's not true. Listen to what the Bible says. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And so when we come to Christ, the, the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to put behind us all the ungodly behaviors that we used to be involved in. In fact, Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 also says, He saved us not because of righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth. That is, we were born again, rebirth. And renewed by the Holy Spirit. So, the, the Holy Spirit of God helps us to be born again and then he actually renews us. He renews our lives. All that is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit transforms us to reflect the very image of God. Anything, hear me carefully, church, anything that comes under the influence of the Holy Spirit undergoes transformation. Anything that comes under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that goes transformation. Nothing remains the same when it comes into contact with the Spirit of God. You can't hold on to any form of sin as a lifestyle and claim that you've had an encounter with Jesus. That is a lie from the pit of hell and the enemy is using that to deceive so many people. You can't hold on to any form of lifestyle, any form of sinful lifestyle, and claim that, oh, I'm serving Jesus. No, you're not serving Jesus. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. I right, me, church. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life and you become a born-again child of God, he will completely transform your life. That's why Paul said, that is the way some of you were. But now, you have been transformed. The Holy Spirit always brings changes. He never listens the same as he found them. The, the creation account is an example of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Bible tells us in Genesis 1 and 2 that at the time of creation, the earth was formless. The earth was formless and then uh, it was empty. And the Bible says darkness was all over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering. He was hovering over the emptiness, over the darkness, over all that you know, uh, you know, was going on. He was hovering. When the Bible says he was hovering, another word is he was brooding. And that word brooding you know, has a picture of a hen that you know, would brood over eggs until there's a change in the situation. And then the eggs are formed into chickens. That's, that's the whole idea. In other words, when the Holy Spirit broods upon something, the Holy Spirit transforms that thing into something completely different. And so the Holy Spirit was brooding over the waters. He was brooding to bring transformation. And then God said, let there be light. And then there was light. Changes take place when the Holy Spirit broods over something. When anything is placed under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there has to be transformation. And so at creation, there was emptiness, everything was dark, and there was formlessness. 
but the Spirit of God brooded over the surface of the waters. And then the light of God shattered the emptiness and the darkness through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is interesting that God didn't speak until the Holy Spirit was brooding over the situation and then God said, let there be. God doesn't do anything outside of the presence and the power of his spirit. Whatever God does, and we talked about this last week, is done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, as you position yourself this year to receive divine favor and restoration, you, know, you, you might feel empty. Maybe you are, you are here today and you, you, you're feeling empty. Lord, yes, this is a year of, of divine favor. This is a year of restoration. But, but Pastor, the truth is, I feel empty. I feel formless. I, I feel overwhelmed. You might even feel purposeless, or, or maybe you might be discouraged as you sit in church today or you listen to the word. But let me give you a word of encouragement today. The Holy Spirit wants to brood over you. Amen? He wants to bring light into whatever dark situation you might have found yourself in. He wants to change your world. He wants to recreate your situation. He wants to release you to become everything that God has ordained your life to be. Amen? Listen, when God blesses, no one can curse. When God ordains, that cannot be changed. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your situation, it doesn't matter what challenges you faced in the past, he has the power to transform you so you can become everything that God wants you to be. If you believe it, put your hands together for the King. Amen? He's faithful. You see, God works from, from formlessness to form. He, he's the porter. And, and so when we place something that is formless into the hands of God, then God works on it and he brings a form to it. God, God works from barrenness to fruitfulness. He works from emptiness to fullness. If you remember the story of Naomi, Naomi came back to, to Judah and he said, I went out of this place full and now I've come back empty. Don't even call me Naomi anymore. Naomi means pleasant. Call me Mara, bitter, because I'm bitter. I, I'm very, very empty right now. But little did Naomi know that God was about to fill her one more time. Amen? Listen, God will fill you one more time. Amen? It doesn't matter what you're going through. God will fill you up. God is more than able. And we know he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God works from nothing to something. Even if you feel as if you are nothing, because the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, God can work out your situation and cause something wonderful to come out of you. Remember the story of David and when the prophet Samuel went to Jesus out to, to anoint one of the sons to become king, he asked all the, all the brothers to come and, you know, God kept rejecting all of them. And then Samuel asked, is there, is there any, anyone left? They had even forgotten about David. The little boy, the father said, David is out there in the field. The father wasn't even counting him in, but God had already counted him in. Listen. God takes nothing and then he makes it into something. And so be encouraged, amen? That is the specialty of the Holy Spirit. He's a God of creation. He's a God of redemption. He's a God of transformation. And my prayer as we go through this is Holy Spirit, transform us. Holy Spirit, do something new in our lives. Holy Spirit, don't leave us the same as before. Holy Spirit, touch us. No matter what we're going through, no matter what our experiences have been, you are able. We release ourselves into your hands. Holy Spirit of God, will you transform us? The Holy Spirit transforms the impossible to become possible. Now, when, when uh, the angel told Mary that uh, she was going to conceive uh, without knowing a man, you know the story. Mary asked the angel, how, how is this going to be? And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit of God will overshadow you. You see, when you allow the Holy Spirit to overshadow you as he overshadowed Mary, a miracle will take place in your life when people think nothing is going to happen. 
God can turn the situation around and cause a miracle to happen. The Holy Spirit always leaves a mark. He leaves a mark of change. He brooded over the emptiness and then the whole of creation was born. He overshadowed Mary and then a miracle took took place. When you allow him to to fill you with his presence, he will leave a positive change on your life. You will never be the same again. Can I invite you to place your life into the hands of the Holy Spirit? Saying, Holy Spirit, just take control. Without him, your life will be formless. It will be empty in spite of the fact that you are in church every single Sunday. You have a form of godliness, but without the power thereof. When, when you submit to the influence of the Holy Spirit, he will bring transformation into your life. Now, the life of the disciples is, is a, a very wonderful example. Before they went into ministry, Jesus asked them to wait in Jerusalem until they had been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, before coming, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the disciples were just a pathetic group of people. They, they were troubled, they were confused, they were fearful, they were disloyal, and they were doubtful. And, and they were jockeying for, for positions. Who gets to sit at the right hand of Jesus and who gets to sit at the left hand of Jesus in the kingdom of God? When Jesus was sweating blood and tears and praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was counting on them to to be praying, he came back and all of them were sleeping. Even when Jesus rose from the dead, Thomas doubted. He didn't believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. And Peter denied Jesus three times and even cares. I don't know him. He had worked with Jesus for three years, but he said, I, I don't know him. He was fearful. And most of the disciples actually fled at the crucifixion because they were trying to save their lives. Now, question, how, how could such a bunch of nobodies change the world? But they did. How? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The same disciples whom Jesus rebuked for you know, not being able to, to, to heal that little boy. There's a story in Matthew 17. They couldn't heal the boy, and Jesus rebuked them. The same disciples now did incredible things and healings in the name of Jesus because they were now empowered by the Holy Spirit. Peter now boldly stood up, and then he, he looked at that man uh, at the temple and said, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but this is what I have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You know, maybe like Thomas, you, you are doubting what, what can God do in my situation? What is God going to do? Lord, I've prayed and prayed and prayed. I'm not sure if this is going to happen. Or maybe, uh, like Peter, you are fearful and you are hiding in, in the crowd. And, you know, you don't even want people to discover you, to see who you are. Because you are afraid. You think all hope is gone. But just like Peter, if you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, he will transform your life and he will use you to bring changes into the lives of others. Amen? He will transform the way you think. He will transform your understanding. He will turn your fear into faith. He will completely transform you so that you will fulfill your destiny. Now, spend time on this because transformation is critical to our fulfilling our destinies in Christ. And so, would you allow the Holy Spirit of God uh, as we go through the series, we, we do say, say, Holy Spirit, I want you to completely transform me. Transform my thinking, transform my understanding, transform the way I look at things. Amen? Secondly, the Holy Spirit will give you power for life. He empowers us for life and for ministry. Jesus said, but you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power. And then you'll be my witnesses. Now Jesus was saying, the Holy Spirit 
will use you to do things that can only be attributed to the power of God. Now, let me illustrate this with uh, two passages of scripture. Let's let's look at Matthew 17 and 14 through 16. Uh, I alluded to this earlier. The Bible says, when he came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son. He said, he often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And so, the Bible says Jesus took that boy into his hands and then he healed him. And this happened before the disciples had been baptized with the Spirit of God. But see what happened after the Holy Spirit had been poured on them on the day of Pentecost. Let's look at Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 12 with me. After the baptism, the Holy Spirit, the, the apostles, uh, performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. After the day of Pentecost, after they had received the power of the Spirit of God, they performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. Verse 15. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on them, on some of them as he passed by. His very shadow. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Now, question. Why were the disciples able to perform these miracles? Those who used to run away and curse and all those kinds of things. Why? Because they had now received the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. Church, Let's draw close to the Spirit of God. Amen? Jesus said in Luke 4.18, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The Holy Spirit has anointed me. That word anointing also means empowerment. The Holy Spirit has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is the power of the Holy Spirit of God at work. Remember, the Bible says, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen? The presence of the Holy Spirit releases power to cause the impossible to become possible. The same Peter who denied Jesus and ran away from that little girl, that same Peter who was falling asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane when he should have been praying, that Peter now stood up on the day of Pentecost after he had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says he preached to the crowd and 3,000 souls came to Jesus in one day. He wasn't running. Now he was standing boldly. His lips were not cursing as before. His lips were now proclaiming the lordship of Jesus Christ. He was now causing the lame to walk. And the shadow from his body was calling sick people to be healed. Why? Because he had now been filled with the spirit of the living God. But you see, the Holy Spirit can empower you not just for miracles. The Holy Spirit can empower you to become a better worker or employee. He, he can empower you to become a better student. He can empower you to become a better husband or a better wife. He can empower you to become a better mother or a better father. He can empower you to become a better parent. He can empower you to become a a better worker for God. The Holy Spirit is is called the paraclete. In other words, he's the one who has been sent by God to walk alongside with us every single day of our Christian journey. We are not alone. The Spirit of God has been given to empower us in everything that we do. He will empower you to handle situations that seem impossible. Amen? Thirdly, the Holy Spirit develops our character. And we'll look at this in greater detail because we're going to take time to to preach on the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when you allow the Holy Spirit to control your life, not only will he transform you and empower you to accomplish things for God, he will also transform your character. 
The Holy Spirit will give you a new nature called the fruit of the Spirit. In Matthew 7 and 20, Jesus made a statement. He said, you know them by their fruits. You know them by their fruits. And so, if you are truly filled with the Holy Spirit, you will bear the fruit of the Spirit of God. And your character will reflect that. And so, what is that fruit? Listen to Galatians 5 and 16. The Bible says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Walk in the Spirit. Let him guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. In other words, if you don't allow the Spirit of God to guide you continually, you're going to go back into the things that God has told us not to do. Verse, 20, verse 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility. There are people who sit in church and they are so hostile. Their behavior is so ungodly. You know, it turns people off from coming to Jesus Christ. That's not the spirit of God in you, amen? Quarreling. I mean, think about it. Always quarreling with people on the job, in the family. Jealousy. Outbursts of anger. Selfish ambition. Dissension. Division. Envy. Drunkenness. Wild parties and other things like this. Church, God has called us to a life of transformation. He's called us to a life of holiness. And so, when we don't allow the Spirit of God to lead us, these are the things that we're going to find ourselves in. And then, we won't have the fullness of joy that the Spirit of God wants us to have. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you again, the apostle continues, as I have before, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so please, don't come to church and listen to the word of God and you know, it goes in one way and comes out and the moment you step out of this place, you are the same old person. That's not God. Amen? Verse 22 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of life, this kind of fruit in our lives. He produces joy. What is joy? Joy simply means he produces love, rather. And what is love? Love simply means that you, you, you seek the highest good of others. He produces peace. Peace means there's calmness in you. There, there's no hostility in your life. There's no turmoil in your life. He produces patience. Patience means you have self-restraint. Even when you are provoked, you still control yourself. The Holy Spirit produces kindness. Kindness means you are concerned about others. Your life is not about hurting people all over the place. There's a smile on your face because the Spirit of God dwells in you. He produces goodness. Goodness means that you stand up for the truth and you hate what is evil. The Holy Spirit produces faithfulness. And faithfulness means that you are trustworthy, you are loyal, you can be counted upon. That's a faithful person. God wants his children to be faithful. He produces gentleness. It means you are not arrogant, you are not proud, You are not stepping on everybody around you. The Holy Spirit produces self-control. And it means you are able to master your desires and your passions regardless of the fact that the enemy will pull you in different areas all the time. That's normal. But when the Spirit of God is in you, you have that self-control. When you allow the Holy Spirit to influence your life, these character traits called the fruit of the Spirit will be developed in you and the Holy Spirit will leave a mark on you. He will change your character. Now listen. We can literally uh, convert people into the kingdom of God by the fruit that we bear, by the fruit that they, they see in us. We must be able 
to preach the gospel just by people experiencing our character. On the other hand, our character can be so negatively loud that it will actually turn people away from coming to Christ. Amen? Can I hear amen? amen? Do you hear me, church? Sometimes the way we behave, the way we are, can be so negative that, that you know, it turns people off who really should be coming to Christ. You will receive power and you'll be my witnesses. Listen, your life is like a tree. And if you allow the waters of the Holy Spirit to nourish you, you will bear the fruit of the Spirit. Your character will be transformed. And that transformation will draw others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Your life will be a powerful witness for Jesus. Finally, guidance. The Bible says in Psalm 32 and verse 8, I will instruct you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. I will instruct you in the way you should go and I'll also guide you with my eye. How is that? Through the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.18 says, Do not get drunk with wine. It said be filled with the Spirit. Now, a person under the influence of alcohol submits to the leadership of alcohol. He might want to walk in a straight fashion, but because he's under the control of alcohol, all he can do is walk in a crooked fashion because he doesn't have control of the situation. He might desire to do that, but but he can't. The alcohol has taken control. Similarly, hear me carefully, a person under the influence of the Holy Spirit will always submit to the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. When, when, when you, are, you are filled with the Spirit and you want guidance from the Spirit and you, you are being guided by the Spirit, you, you allow the Spirit to influence your decisions. You practice the presence of God continually. Now, let me just say this, that some of us have a better relationship with, with, with social media than we do have with the Holy Spirit. Is Pastor speaking the truth? We know everything there is on YouTube, but we hardly know much about the Holy Spirit. Amen? We are constantly on Instagram and all the things that we do, but we hardly have time for the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me encourage you to maximize your time with the Holy Spirit. Amen? There there might be times when circumstances might my, my dictate, you look at the circumstances, the situation you find yourself in, and you know, those, those circumstances might dictate that you, you take a certain direction. But, but because you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you follow the lead of the Holy Spirit who is saying, that's not the way. I want you to go a different way, even though it doesn't make sense right now. Let me give you a couple of examples. Philip was in the middle of a successful crusade in Samaria. And great miracles were happening. But the Bible says in Acts 8 and 26, the Bible says, An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then listen to verse 29. The Spirit said to Philip, When Philip did what the Holy Spirit uh, had called, told him to, when, when the angel had told him to, the Spirit then said to him, Go south to that chariot and stay near it. Philip, do you see that chariot? I want you to go to that chariot and then stay near the chariot. Now, when when Philip submitted uh, to the Holy Spirit, it resulted in the salvation of a very important person who was riding that chariot. He he, he was the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, question, what would have happened if, if Philip had not submitted to the leader of the Holy Spirit? That man was in the chariot, reading the book of Hazar, didn't understand what he was reading, and so the Holy Spirit said, there's a hungry man who wants to know Jesus. He's in that chariot. Philip would do good. And then Philip stopped everything he was doing, and he went, and then he preached to that man, and the man became born again. What would have happened if Philip hadn't been obedient? The kingdom would have lost a lot. Question, how much is the kingdom losing because you are probably 
not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Sometimes we are afraid to, to live our comfort zone, and our comfort zone becomes our security. And we miss out on great opportunities because we do not submit to the leading of the Spirit. Learn to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let me close with one more example. The Apostle Paul knew the importance of following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So at one point uh, in his ministry, he felt he needed to go to Jerusalem. Everybody was telling Paul, don't go. Terrible things are going to happen to you when you go to Jerusalem. But listen to Paul's words in Acts chapter 20. Look at 22 with me. And now, compelled by the Spirit, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. What were the results? Paul went to, to, to Jerusalem because the Holy Spirit was asking him to. And then he ended up being imprisoned in Rome. But out of his prison cell came these three important books of the Bible, Philippians, Ephesians, and Colossians. He followed the direction of the Holy Spirit to Jerusalem and said, you're going to be in prison, but he went on anyway. And then in that prison cell, he wrote those three books. And so whenever you quote if he's, uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, remember that that came out of the pen of a man in prison who had followed the direction of the Holy Spirit. But when you quote Ephesians 3 and 20, my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think according to his part that's at work in me. Remember that that word came out of prison from a man who had listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. How could such a man, how could a man in prison write these amazing words? Words of hope and words of encouragement and words of purpose. The answer is because he was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. He had learned to be transformed. He had learned to be empowered. His character had been changed. And he had learned to live under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And this is my closing word uh, for us today as we bring things very close. As we go through this series of messages, allow the Holy Spirit to transform you. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to empower you. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to change your character wherever you see flaws. Say, Holy Spirit, please, please change me. Allow him to lead you and to guide you, and your life will never, never be the same again. Shall we rise up, church? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.